Hi, I'm Mayor Jay Tipshraney, and welcome to Chandler Inside Now. Today, we have a return guest, Lee McFeeders. Lee is the director of the J.P. Morgan Chase Economic Outlook Center at our very own Arizona State University. He's also a research professor of economics. Lee has been quoted in the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, The Economist, Business Week, The New York Times, and Newsweek, and has appeared nationally on Good Morning America and CNN News, commenting on the economy of the Western state. Lee, great to have you back again. Very excited to hear what you're going to have to say about our economy here over the next half hour. Well, it's good to see you. I appreciate the invitation. Fantastic. You've been teaching at ASU for several decades, but now you are mainly in a research role. Remind our audience a little bit about yourself, what brought you to ASU back in the 70s, and some of the research you do for the university. Well, um, I came to ASU, um, I think, with uh, in an era when we were hiring a lot of faculty. It was really a growth period, not only for ASU, but for the business school, the ASU Business School. And uh, by the end of the 70s, when I came, we were actually uh, the largest business school in the country. And that was partly due to the fact that there was just tremendous demand for uh, business education, uh, but uh, we also had uh, great leadership, a fellow named Glenn Overman. I don't know if you remember that name. I remember that name. But he was uh, uh, a fellow that uh, really got a lot done, I think, for the, for the business school. Um, and when I came, um, I was, uh, of course, hired in as a, a young faculty member, and I was all fired up about uh, publishing in the journals and so forth. And uh, that's what you do, publish your parish. But over time, um, I was drawn more and more into the applied research relating to the Arizona economy. Uh, began working with some of the state agencies on job growth uh, and uh, really got interested in tracking and mm -hmm. forecasting the Arizona economy. Uh, at that time, we re really didn't have uh, a forecasting center uh, but in the mid-1980s, um, the Economic Outlook Center was established. Um, Bank One stepped forward as a sponsor. J.P. Morgan Chase came in, bought Bank One, took over the sponsorship of the center. And uh, over the past 10 years or so, my entire responsibilities then have moved over to tracking the regional economy. We also follow the 12 western states, California, Oregon, Washington, all the way down to Texas, up to Montana. We have forecasts on those states. We have data available. Um, and uh, we work with um, not only local businesses, but mm -hmm. uh, regional and national businesses that uh, want to find out what's going on in, in the West. And my work in the last five years or so has been almost entirely on um, contracts and uh, projects that uh, have been uh, funded by outside agencies that uh, they pay our bills in the Seedman um, Institute, which houses the Economic Outlook Center. And so it's an area of research. We don't publish it in the journals, but we really make it available, I think, to the public, to clients. And uh, it's a very rewarding um, endeavor, I think. So your first year at ASU was which year? Uh, 1976. And you were teaching well, economics? I was teaching economics, uh, the introductory course, uh, the money and banking course, and uh, I taught the regional economics course. Uh -huh. And those were the days when every faculty member had three classes to teach. And uh, not only that, but the newcomers, uh, they got the Saturday assignment. We, we actually had classes on Saturdays in those days. So. <laughs> Show up yeah. at 740 on, uh, on campus in Tempe on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, that was uh, what the newcomers did. I, the reason I ask is I graduated from the business school in 1977. So even though I didn't have you as a professor, I'm sure we crossed paths in that building. So anyway, let's, let's get to it here. Last time you were here was September of 2015. We discussed at that time the local and state economies, obviously something that our audience is very, very interested in. So I'd like you to compare the economy today to that of a few years ago when you were here and uh, maybe touch on some trends you're seeing. Well, uh, 
I looked up uh, my forecast for uh, 2015 that I had brought with you, I think, mm -hmm. on a chart and, you know, handed it to you. We talked a little bit about it. And uh, we were expecting something in the range of 65,000 new Arizona jobs and growth of about 2.5%. Uh, and, and um, that's really the way it played out uh, when the final numbers came in. Uh, we, had, we had added about 2.5% job growth, about 65,000 jobs. But, you know, that, that does not really tell you as much about my capability as a forecaster as the fact that the Arizona economy, um, since the recession and since the recovery, has really kind of settled in to a sort of steady growth pace. It's not like we had in the go-go years of the 90s or you know, uh, during the uh, period of the housing boom just before the downturn, uh, we have really entered into an era where we are not growing 3% with job creation, for example. We're growing, let's just say, 2.5%. Mm -hmm. But that is still good enough to put Arizona among the top 10 growth states. And so looking back then uh, where we've been, um, the recession, um, took over 300,000 jobs out of Arizona. We were harder hit than practically any state. Um, the country as a whole lost about 6% of employment. And uh, I think if you just convert it to a percentage, I, I think Arizona lost about 12% of all jobs. And so by that measure, we were actually, you know, twice as hard hit as, as right. the nation as a whole. So we were further down and uh, the comeback then for Arizona, we just had a lot more ground to make up. So when I was here, uh, oh, about a year and a half ago, I guess, uh, we were still looking uh, to recover those lost 300,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. um, we finally recovered them uh, in the spring of, of 2016. And since that time, then we have been adding to um, overall employment. So, you know, it was a five and a half year recovery period. And um, usually, you know, we've had 11 post-war recessions. And usually, um, up until recently, recovery from a recession was a one-year, two-year kind of uh, experience. But um, for the nation as a whole, for Arizona, you know, we measured this recovery in, in years. Um, and um, so that kind of explains why if, if it's felt like it's been slow here for the last five years, the answer is yes, it has been. It's been a slow climb. Yes, out of it's the brought, great going in the right direction. And um, just based on the numbers we have, it looks like we've sort of settled into a sustainable, sort of, um, you know, very moderate, but nonetheless uh, satisfactory uh, growth pace. Is that growth pace? So we're still looking forward that this economy is going to continue to grow for a few more years, I would imagine. Yeah, our forecast for the current year, 2017, uh, uh, is uh, for 2.5% growth. So that's mm -hmm. down slightly from 2016, which was 2.6%, you know, very minimal change. But what we are not seeing is any kind of acceleration. Uh, what we're seeing is adding maybe 65, 68,000 jobs, something in that range. Um, now, if you've been in Arizona for uh, a long time, as we both have, right. you can think back to the 4%, 5% job growth. This is an, an economy when it is really humming, is capable of adding over 100,000 jobs a year. But we have not seen that really since the 1990s. And what we have seen instead is a very steady 2.5% growth. Um, but lest we, you know, throw up our hands and, you know, really say things are weak here, you have to compare it to something. And rather than comparing to our own long-term average, if we look at other states, mm -hmm. that 2.5% job growth puts Arizona among the top 10, maybe number 8, maybe number 10. Um, and if we just tick up a little bit to 26, 27, we would be right. a top 5 um, job growth state. So, you know, we're right there with the leading right. states, even though uh, it is not sort of the 
spectacular expansion wow. that that we all have uh, have seen uh, in the up periods of Arizona. So if we equated that to a number, that two and a half percent, what would the number of new jobs be based on? Puts you in the range of approaching sixty-eight to seventy thousand jobs. A healthy number. It it certainly is. That's over a th well over a thousand a week. Yeah. And um, about two thirds of those, maybe even more, maybe three quarters, uh, or eighty percent. I mean to say, uh, would be in the greater Phoenix area. And yeah. so, of course, you know, Chandler, East Valley, uh, has been beneficiary a lot of that <coughs> uh, job growth. Yeah, good. On the past show, we talked about some of the sectors that were contributing to the recovering uh, job growth, and that was healthcare, finance, insurance, which we've seen our share of those in the Chandler uh, East Valley area. So is, are those still significant factors or are some of the other uh, areas shown? Uh, yeah, that it, that is continuing to be the pattern of growth that, that we are seeing. There's sort of a separation in terms of the type of jobs, the wages that are paid. Uh, we right now, um, just based on February of 2017, compared to February of 2016, you know, year over year, Arizona is the number one state for growth in finance and insurance jobs. And those are jobs that pay in the high 60s on into the 70,000 a year. So we're the number one state for growth of those kind of jobs. Uh, we're also probably in the top five for growth in food service jobs. Those are jobs that are paying probably 25,000. Uh, and both of those sectors are probably growing about 10, 11,000 jobs a year. So you've got your high wage jobs offset by your lower wage jobs. And so, you know, the middle doesn't really change that much. But those high wage jobs really make a difference uh, because those are jobs that are paid at a, a national wage scale. Um, those are typically for nationally based companies that brings in outside dollars, whereas your food service jobs, with the exception of tourists, your food service jobs tend to recycle mm -hmm. money that is, that is already here. But, you know, we're one of the faster growing states for population, and you have to have the service jobs to support the population. Um, so, you know, you really can't fault an economy for creating a lot of service jobs. You need service jobs um, in any kind of dynamic economy simply uh, to reflect the fact the population is growing and, and private sector demand for uh, all sorts of services is growing. Thank you. I'll be right back. I'm going to reintroduce the show and then okay. we'll uh, continue. I'm Mayor Jay Tiptraney. You're watching Chandler Inside and Out today. Our guest is ASU economist Lee McFeeters talking about the economy and where we stand. So population growth was kind of a missing link last time we visited. So I know you just touched on it briefly, but where are we at with population growth and where do we maybe want to be with population yeah, if, growth? Of, of all the indicators where uh, the Arizona analysts like to kind of say, these were the glory years. We look back to the 1990s uh, and before that, and we saw population growing three, four, five percent. Uh, we would be right there with Nevada among the fastest growing states in, in the country. Um, since the recovery started, Arizona population has simply not grown much faster than about one and a half percent. In other words, about half our long term average. Our long-term average is about 3% growth. Mm -hmm. But for the last decade, we've been growing about 1.5% growth. So really, it's probably time to get a new average. Uh, but at the same time, this is another one of those indicators where, you know, you really need to just kind of forget about what we saw in, in the, the past and look around the country and see how is population growing. At the national level, population is growing less than 1%. Our 1 half percent growth here puts Arizona, again, among the top 10 states for population growth. The 2016 numbers just came out, and we're fifth in the country uh, for the absolute number of new residents. Um, you may have seen the big uh, write-up in the paper, headlines on Maricopa County, the number one 
right. uh, uh, population growth county uh, in the country. Uh, Phoenix metro area, um, I believe we were fifth or sixth, right there among the fastest growing large metropolitan areas in the country. And uh, a statistic that I think is really telling is if you look at domestic migration, this is your measure of people that have decided to leave where they are and relocate somewhere else. The number two destination for those folks in 2016 was the Phoenix metropolitan area. Number one was Dallas. Uh, and, and here we're counting an absolute number of people. So Dallas, you know, is already a big area. So in a, in a sense, there's kind of a factor of scale built in there that you expect to see a lot of people moving to Dallas anyway. But Phoenix has shown that we have the capability of attracting people. And of course, they bring with them their assets, they bring their education, they may uh, be bringing with them a business, um, they may bring uh, talents that uh, they apply to the job search here, but that's really what brings a lot of uh, dynamism to an economy is this population inflow. Mm -hmm. And looking across the country, uh, there's about 30 states right now that are losing population and about 20 states that are gaining population. And of course, Arizona is right in the top 10 of those 20 that, that are gaining population. So, you know, the country's constantly changing, but it's the West and the Southeast that continue to attract people, attract new jobs, uh, attract new business. Um, and, uh, you know, we're seeing that pattern that's been the pattern for uh, quite a while, but uh, we expect it to be sustainable and, and going forward. Yeah, and it's interesting. It's just like the job growth and now the population growth that we're talking about. We have new norms compared that, to that it, super, yes. super that's heated it. growth. That's it. But our new norm is still very good compared to the Nothing to complain level. about at all. Yeah. And it's sustainable. Yeah. You see, when you, you know, 5% population growth, simply not sustainable. One and a half, you can plan for it. Um, communities can absorb people better. Labor force can absorb them yeah. better. Um, in, in a way, it's, it's a, a calmer type of growth. Uh, and uh, it looks like we're just going to be on that path unless something you know, happens at the national or maybe even international level. Yeah, interesting. So where are we at now with the housing and the and the multifamily development. You know, we have a, the same phenomenon uh, when you look at your housing numbers. Um, are we going to produce 60, 80,000 single family permits this year? No, I'm not going to do it. Um, we have settled into something in the range of about 10% increase every year in the number of single family permits. We're for the state as a whole at about 25,000. Uh, the multifamily, somewhere in the range of 10 to 12,000 multifamily. Um, and I think that, uh, again, given, you know, the way population growth is, given the makeup of the population, uh, the millennials and, and, you know, and their preference for, for renting uh, sometimes over, over uh, buying. And then some of the things that are going on in the single family mm -hmm. market that are affecting that market. I think that what we can look forward to is adding somewhere in the range of 25 to 30,000 single family permits, again, off about a third, uh, you know, from, from what we would expect to see is kind of a norm, uh, but again, quite sustainable. It's a healthy growth. It's not like, again, like the old days, but it seems to be more sustainable for the long range to see this kind of growth. Yeah, what you know, what you really need to watch is um, everybody wants their home price to, you know, appreciate. On the other hand, if home prices appreciate out of reach of, you know, the median worker, then you kind of get yourself into a problem where housing becomes unaffordable. We've not seen that very often in Arizona, and that's been one of the secrets to uh, Arizona as an attractive destination for people who are looking to uh, relocate. We'll have to watch that too, because recently certain ranges of housing, say the two to 500,000, a lot of demand, bids, even bidding up on resales, the price of houses, so that where the bid price is actually 
more than the asking price. Yeah, so, we've had some supply problems. Yeah, we have to and, watch that. Uh, you know, and part of it is uh, labor availability. Um, I talk to real estate folks and, uh, you know, developers and builders, and they're just having a lot of trouble getting, uh, you know, basic construction skills. Um, um, and um, you would expect that's going to translate into higher wages, which means higher home prices yes. in terms of costs. We'll keep an eye on that. So other key economic indicators for Chandler and the, the area in terms of, you know, employment by industry or unemployment or purchasing power, where are we at on those kind of things? Well, um, Chandler is always an area that has uh, very solid unemployment numbers. Um, uh, I think that um, just month after month, Chandler has been running well, up, at least a full percentage point, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, below the metro area. Mm -hmm. So very, very solid uh, labor market. Um, and of course, the, you know, the quality uh, of jobs, the, you know, the more that you lean towards the technology uh, type of jobs. Now, of course, you know, those typically require a college degree. <coughs> um, but at, at the same time, those are the jobs that pull up average incomes. And uh, I think that Chandler and the entire East Valley just have an excellent record in attracting that type of uh, employer. So the outlook uh, is very, very solid, I think, for, for Chandler in particular, East Valley in general. Yeah, and it doesn't hurt that we had a nice announcement from uh, Intel in the first quarter of 2017 right. where they're going to fire back up Fab 42 and expend about a, another $7 billion into that. That's right. And don't forget that that generates all sorts of supplier firms. Uh, and, um, all, you know, we have the uh, so-called multiplier effect then that, um, you know, every thousand jobs uh, at that level uh, has a potential to create two to three uh, jobs for every single job. So you may be talking about... Uh, you know, approaching 10,000 jobs as a result yeah. of that. Yeah, it's real, pretty powerful for the whole valley. That's right. The East Valley will benefit in a lot of ways. And so, yeah, we're excited about that and look forward to them getting back and working in that, that facility. You know, we're seeing in Chandler a lot of car technology and specifically the driverless car technology, whether it be Waymo, formerly Google, or Intel, they all have their cars on the road. So maybe you can talk about that trend and new car and driverless car technology and where is that all taking us? Well, you know, we, we follow the numbers on um, sales and, and so forth. And, uh, you know, the key indicator in the automobile industry right now is that uh, uh, used car prices are actually trending down. Um, there's some difficulty in the financial sector with subprime car loans and you know, so the whole auto industry is so vital mm -hmm. to the U.S. is being completely disrupted uh, by the notion of the driverless car, the potential uh, for people to actually cut back from having two cars to one car. Um, so there, there are changes, I think, in the wind from this uh, that are very hard to project. Uh, but when you think about it, you know, Think of office buildings, for example. Uh, suppose that people didn't have to drive um, to the office. Suppose that they had other ways of getting there. Uh, they could be dropped off by a driverless car. You wouldn't need as much parking space. Uh, parking garages perhaps could be converted in some other way. So, you know, we're just on the verge of, I think, massive disruptions that uh, you know, we, we just don't know what the shape of it is going to be. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, people have made big investments in their private autos. And I think that it's going to be quite a while before we see people willingly stepping out of their cars and, uh, you know, being driven uh, by, uh, <laughs> you know, anonymous uh, technology. Yeah. I'm going to switch over to the national economy. We only have a sure. couple of minutes left, but we'll, we'll hit this pretty quick. But we had a uh, new administration take over the White House, the Trump administration. What kind of changes or what are your thoughts on some of the, how that's affecting the national economy? What we're seeing right now on the national level is 
a, a juxtaposition of, of two really different forces at work. If you look at business confidence, you look at consumer confidence, uh, you look at expectation surveys, uh, what we call soft data, it's all very positive. Mm -hmm. It's all very positive. And it's in response to what? It's in response to the prospect of tax reform, uh, perhaps uh, less regulation, um, changes in exports and imports that uh, benefit exporters, um, corporate tax cuts. Uh, all of these things sound very favorable, mm -hmm. uh, not only to the voter, but uh, to business. Those are the soft survey numbers. You look at the actual hard numbers. What is the economy doing? The forecast that we have for GDP that I think is pretty solid is something in the range of 2.2, 2.3% growth. In other words, very similar to what we saw last year, the year before, the year before. This is an economy that grew accustomed to 3% GDP growth, and we haven't seen that for a decade. In other words, people, I think, have taken on an air of optimism, but how long is it going to take before we actually see tax reform, before we actually see massive changes in regulations, changes in health care? Um, I think 2017 uh, is not going to see many changes at all. And I think that these are great topics to discuss and plan for mm -hmm. going forward, but I don't think it's going to affect the 2017 forecast. And it's a coin flip whether it's going to affect the 2018 yeah. forecast. So we're going to continue to see, I think, somewhat sluggish growth in this economy, even though there's a lot of optimism. We're ending on a good note because now we have something to get you back in here in about a year and we'll see where the national is and what have you, but I appreciate your insight today, both on Chandler's economy, our local state economy, and then the national economy. And again, thank you for your time okay, today. Okay, thank you, good to be with you. I'm Mayor Jay Tipschraney, you've been watching Chandler Inside and Out. Our guest in studio today was ASU economist Lee McFeeters. Hope you enjoyed the show. Until we see you again, take care and be safe. Thank you. Okay.